Hey everyone, so we're coming to the end of April now and uh, the whole month the weather hasn't been that great in the Pacific North where it's been raining quite a bit. Today looks okay so we're taking advantage of it by coming out to Weaver Lake which is about two hours by vehicle um, from Vancouver. This is a really nice lake. Um, oh, there's a bite. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, like I said, this is a really nice lake and there are tons of rainbow trout in this lake as you can see. They're not very big and, I, and you're gonna see that in this video but this is definitely a really uh, nice destination for fishing and camping for the entire family. So let's land the f this fish and I'll show you guys what we're using today. This is a rainbow trout. Oop, nice little jump. Ah, see, it's hooked right at the edge. It's a slippery bugger. Okay, here you go. That's a little rainbow trout. Like I said, it's not very big maybe 12 to 14 inches long let's let this guy go first Oop. and gave me a nice shower there water is still quite cold so cold shower there <laughs> so we're fishing um we're float fishing with bait today and um which is pretty pretty basic fishing technique that that pretty much everyone uses when you start out fishing. I like it uh, because it's really fun to watch that float going down when the fish bite and uh, you know even though I've done fly fishing and lure fishing or other kinds of fishing that are more advanced um, but every now and then I still like to come back to float fishing even for little fish like these. So we're just using um, single eggs today, um, just threading onto the hook like that and that's the ticket, it's been working all day. So these are Polsky single eggs um, that we've been using, you should just put two on, two or three eggs and these trout definitely love them. You gotta be ready because you know. Oh, there it is! Oh, I missed it again. Even though I'm, I was, I was totally ready. I just. So when you come to Weaver Lake, there's there's tons of these little bays here. As you can see, there's, there's quite a few boats behind us, and um, all these boats are just working these little bays. And we're fishing in a tiny bay, not too far from the launch. Um, it's a nice quiet spot, shoulder from the wind, and anchored about 40 feet of water casting into the shallow and that's because we've seen we saw quite a few fish rising um, in the shallow water there before and it works uh, as soon as we anchored um, we we're into fish pretty much right away um, yeah it takes it takes a few minutes for for them to find the bait but once once they find it there's no hesitation the, this thing with trout they don't they don't really um, it's not like carp or not like any middle species they, they don't you know come up and suck in the bait and you know blow it out um, when it comes to trout they grab it and there's the run rate oh that was fast i wasn't even watching that float there and uh the fish actually just took the line this is why it's important to keep that line fairly tight between the end of the rod and the float um, because you can connect with the fish pretty directly when it bites. I think this one's a little smaller than the other one. Um, yeah. It still fights pretty well though on this light tackle here. Swallowed it. <laughs> Where's my pliers? <laughs> We're gonna have to cut this out. <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay, here's another one. I won't let him go. So 
So one problem with um, bait fishing is that a lot of times the fish will swallow the bait. There's no, there's no denying when it comes to that. Um, so, you know, I usually prefer to any fish bait when in a fishery where you can keep the fish um, because you, you do, you will cause fish mortality once well. That if they swallow the bait, and if you can get the cook out, um, the, you, you might kill the odd fish and it's important to keep that fish instead of letting it go um, just because it, it will not survive. Um, and that's, and the other point is, this is why it's quite important that I prefer not to use bait in a catch and release fishery just for that um, very reason that you know you, you don't want to kill fish unnecessarily in fisheries that you have to release the fish because there's no point in releasing the fish if, it, if it's going to die right. Oh, another one. Uh, I don't think that's very big either. You just never know uh, what's going to be at. Oh, it came off. Ah, another uh, medium sized one, I guess. Oh, little scrappers. There we go. Well, this one looks a little different. I'm gonna show you. I'm losing the net because it actually swallowed the hook. Um, Let's get that hook out first before we take a look at it. Libri. There we go. This one's a little bit um, spottier. There's quite a, quite a few smaller spots where the where's the other fish are. Less spots, but they tend to be bigger. Off it goes. Now we've so far we've released pretty much all the fish that we caught, um, but you can actually keep um, fish in this lake. Um, like mo most lakes, um, uh, there is a daily quota, so best to check it. And it's usually four, you know, some regions is six, um, some regions is two, so you, you gotta check your regulations before you head out. Um, but we might keep a few big ones at the end of the day, just to uh, eat tonight. Oh, missed it again. That must be another small one. This fish jumping all around us really, I mean, it's, I think everyone's catching them. Quite a few fly fishermen behind us as well. So if you want to get into trout fishing in British Columbia, there are hundreds of different lakes right across this province where you can do it. And uh, most of these lakes are stocked with um, rainbow trout and brook trout and cutthroat trout by the Freshwater Fisher Society BC. And depending on the lake's biology, um, the, each lake, some lakes might have rainbow trout, some lakes might have cutthroat trout, some lakes might have different types of rainbow trout in it. So for example, in our urban lake fisheries closer to Vancouver, uh, we have what we call Fraser Valley rainbow trout. Oh, there's a fish. Fraser Valley rainbow trout. and. Um, those fish are raised at the hatchery until they're about 250 grams, 300 grams, and then they release directly into the lake uh, for people to catch right away. But these guys right here, oh, okay, that's fish comes off anyways. This is a quick release. But like I said, these fish right here, oh, it snapped the hook, and you know why? It actually went underneath the um, anchor rope, and that was uh, that was my bad. But anyways, I was saying, these trout right here are blackwater rainbow trout. Um, so when these fish are released, they are released at about this big. Um, very, very small, um, roughly between 10 and 50 grams. And once released, they, they live in the lake for a couple of years. They grow bigger and then anglers can catch them. So you're basically catching semi-hatchery raised trout, semi-wild trout. Uh, because they've been feeding in the lake naturally for a couple of years. 
and you can totally tell the difference between these urban trout and uh, between the urban trout and these trout uh, when it comes to fighting ability. These trout fight a lot harder. Um, they they're a lot slender. They're not they're not as fat just because it's, they're not being force fed. These these fish have actually have to work for their food. Oh, <laughs> see that reflex. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a very big one um, yeah you can tell just by the way it's fights it's a lot smaller than the other one uh, let's see so this one's only about maybe I don't know 8, eight to 10 inches long look at that little guy okay let's let it go The wind is actually blowing quite a few logs out onto the area where I'm fishing. There's quite a few floating logs around, if you can see, right in front of me. Hopefully that's not an issue. So th this type of lake fisheries, you can pretty much do it anywhere. Um, you can, you can, we're doing it on the boat, but you can actually fish from the shore as well. Uh, you can, you can, we're fishing with bait, but you can fly fish with for them. You can fish with small spoons and spinners as well. There's just so many different techniques, uh, different ways of catching them. So anyone can do them. <laughs> there goes the fish. Oh, 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 missed it. That must be a small one. One egg left. <laughs> Is that on? Yeah, it's... no, it came off. That was a big mistake. The line was too loose. It's getting a little too relaxed. Should be fast. The last two times, uh, they bit right away. So hopefully, look, there's still another fish there. Oh, missed it again. What's going on? Okay, one more. So every time, just putting threading two eggs onto the hook and that's more than enough to entice these fish. Sometimes even one egg is fine but I like to put two on just in case one falls off uh, when you're casting the line out. The tangle here. <laughs> Making a mess. Uh, Yep. Okay, one more. And I don't get it. You know, can try it now. Oh, bit. Come on. Ready for you this time. Oh, there it is. Ah, uh, not very big. That's probably why I was missing the all the other ones. So check this out, look at the spots are all on the back and there's not many spots on the uh, lower portion of the body and that's very very typical for these black water rainbow trout. <laughs> it's so slippery, it's so, um, so hard to grab onto them. Okay, so it's Nina's turn.
Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this video feature on Flow Fishing for Trout. And if you want to find out what we use in this video, please click on the gear talk. And for more fishing information in British Columbia, please check out our website at fishingwithrout.com and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. We're always happy to answer them. Until next time, good luck fishing.